with my husband, and we know as women, we can do things and they don't even get it sometimes. <laughs> so yeah. often. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's go there. Yeah, I got a bad <laughs> attitude, and, or I said something wrong, and he's, you know, didn't even notice it. The Holy Spirit is like, okay, you need to say you're sorry. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He doesn't, he didn't even know. <laughs> Yeah. So why do I have to why apologize? Have to apologize? Yeah. And he, he never says he's sorry, so uh, <laughs> why should I be sorry? Right. But, you know, when you God is working things out, he's putting things in. When, when I submit yeah. to the Holy Spirit right. and say, hey, bae, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. I said this wrong. I said that wrong. And I shouldn't have done that. It allows the Holy Spirit to do so much with that just that one act. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Talk It Out. We've already been talking because there's a lot to talk about <laughs> with this group today. We're so glad that you're here with us. And I want you to take a look at this group that I have with me here today. Mm-hmm. I have the Joyce Meyer, yes, yes. The, best-selling the. author, worldwide Bible oh, teacher. Oh, yes. That's my come on, Meg. Uh, I have no, Aaron stop. Cluley, amazing <laughs> leader, <laughs> wonderful mother of two, so talented. Yes, she That's is. nice. <laughs> and we have Cece Wine. Mine is <laughs> yes. the most acclaimed gospel singer of all time. That's what they say. They, they, they at least <laughs> One of that. my very know. favorite people. It. She And the wonderful oh. thing is, is she's very talented. She's very beautiful, but she is just so sincere. Yes. And mm-hmm. it's the inside that just pours <laughs> yes. out of you. Thank that, you. That Honored we to love be here. so much. Honored to be here. Same <laughs> with, with you. You're amazing. <laughs> Thank you. So you're today, the, you're, you're really sweet. You're so kind. Today, we are going to talk about keystones that make a life well lived. And when you've got a group like this, you've got some women with a lot to share. Mm-hmm. So I think everybody will be real excited to hear some of these things of what we've all learned makes a difference in life. What are yeah. those things that make a life that you not only enjoy and are fulfilled, but that honors God right. and that makes people feel loved and valued as well. There's so much to this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what we're going to do first is we're going to jump in with Joyce teaching a little bit okay. um, about what you've learned in this area, some of the important things, and then we are going to dig right into some of those keystones that are going to make a difference for you. Will you be excellent when nobody's looking? Will you do the right thing when nobody's looking? Will you sacrifice? Will you serve him even if you're not paid for it? You know, I remember years and years ago, I mean, people volunteered for everything. And then over the years, it's gotten to the point where people don't want to make a move if they don't get paid for it. And we need to get back to serving God because we love him and not for any other reason. I need this message tonight. I hope you do too. An excellent person exceeds the requirements. They always go the extra mile. They go above and beyond. And they always do more than enough. They always do a superior job. John Maxwell said that one of his goals every time he goes to speak is to always do a little bit more than what is expected of him. I love that. We're called to walk in excellence. Now, we know the most excellent thing is love. 1 Corinthians 12, 31 says, but earnest desire and zealously cultivate the greatest and the best gifts and graces, the higher gifts and the choice graces. And yet I will show you still a more excellent way, one that is better by far and the highest of them all, love. So everybody should have some books and teachings on love because of all the things that we study, we need to study love. We need to look at 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 8, and take those words apart and ask yourself, am I patient? Am I kind? Am I humble? Am I willing to give up my right to be right? Am I mad at anybody? How quick do I forgive somebody? Am I touchy? (laughs) 
Am I easily offended? Do I always believe the best? We have to get serious about this. Jesus said, one new commandment I give unto you. One. One new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. And pretty much in every message I preach now, I say a little something about the importance of forgiving people that have hurt you. And I think I'm just going to keep it up because there are more and more angry people in the world today than I have ever seen. And you know, the Bible says in Matthew 24, which is a chapter about the sign, signs of end times, that in the last days, because of the lawlessness and the wickedness in the land, the love of the great body of people, that's us, will grow cold. And boy, the devil loves that. Because I'll tell you what the highest form of spiritual warfare is, red hot on fire love. Walking in love. What a great list. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, yeah. those are really, <laughs> I'm going to say high standards. I mean, you, you kind of started out with like, oh no, I'm in trouble. <laughs> yeah, right off the bat. <laughs> But Joyce Definitely. likes to do that to yeah. us sometimes. Yeah, yes. yeah I yep. kind of enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> but giving us the right things to shoot for. And, mm -hmm. and so I, I just want to ask you guys, with, with your life experience, you hear that list or maybe you have other things on your own list. What are some of the things that you would say have been the most important things for you that have given you um, life satisfaction, drawn you closer to people and to Jesus? Well, you know, I talk pretty often about how I had no reason at all to be unhappy. My ministry was doing fairly well. I had a good husband, mm -hmm. no problem with my kids, mm -hmm. didn't have any financial problems, and yet I wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like there was always something. I was always discontented about mm -hmm. something, and kind of like this low-level discontentment. And when I started praying about it, God just spoke to my heart, and he said, you're not happy because you're selfish. Mm. Mm. He doesn't cut me much slack. So <laughs> I kind of preached everybody else the same way he gives right. it to me. Right. right. But, um, you know, we have to be very careful that we don't even have a selfish attitude with God. Mm. You know, he's not really alive just to serve us. And, mm -mm. you know, he, he didn't send Jesus to the cross just so. Yes, he wants us to be happy, mm -hmm. but it's, it, you know, I, I think about my kids. It's like when they were little, I did everything for them. But now, I don't want them every time they come to my house to want something. Mm -hmm. I want them to come just to say, I love you. Mm -hmm. right. Anything you need me to do. Right. You know, and I think God's the same way. That we, we come to a point in our spiritual walk with him where we need to be mature enough to stop just having this long list of everything that we need every day to keep us happy. Otherwise, we're just, well, I just can't do this anymore, God. It's just too hard, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just, I think that there's just so much selfishness in the world, so much of what I want. And it gets, it gets slides over into our walk with God. And, mm -hmm. you know, Jesus said in Mark 8, 34, anyone who wants to be my disciple... Let him take up his cross and follow me. And we're mixed up about what that cross is. It's not disasters and, you know, disease and every kind of... He said, forget yourself, lose sight of yourself and all your own interests and take up your cross and follow me. So the cross we carry is to live an unselfish life. Yeah. And that's a daily commitment and a daily challenge. Yeah. It, it's so... <laughs> It's so contrary to what we want, right. you know, the, totally. that whole idea of what I think I need to be right. happy. Right. So living an unselfish life, it takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of work. Yeah. It's yeah. not easy. I yeah. wonder if that's hard. Well, you tell me. Is that <laughs> difficult for you? And, and Cece, too, I wonder you as well, because mm -hmm. you guys have, have such amazing, like you've had amazing careers and you've had such impact for the kingdom that people want 
want to hear from you and they want to learn from you, it would be so easy, I would think, to be selfish because <laughs> you could. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you, you are both the most humble people. So how do you keep that selfishness in check on a daily basis? Because you make it sound easy. And well, I, see, see. <laughs> <laughs> she passed that one to you quick. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, first She's of all, sharing. first yeah. of all, I, this is why I love and adore this incredible woman of God. Um, hearing the teachings and understanding when you read the word, at least my experience in reading the word. Yeah. I say ouch more than hallelujah. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You say them both, of course, because without the love of God, we wouldn't be here. But when we become hmm. disciples of Jesus, it's a lot of ouch. Yeah. Right. Um, that's very and true. And that's why the Bible tells us we have to crucify our flesh daily. Right. Ouch. It's a daily yeah. <laughs> ouch. Yeah. Because like you said, it's totally contrary to the way we were made up. Yeah. You try selling a book on that. <laughs> Right. right. <laughs> Nobody wants that. You can do it. You can do it, Joyce. If anybody can do it, you can do it. Um, because that is, like she said, that is the cross we bear. Mm-hmm. And it's an honor and a privilege, but it doesn't mean it's easy. Right. But when you begin to train your flesh, when you mm-hmm. begin to uh, crucify your flesh daily, you do begin to develop more spiritual muscles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it's not as hard but it never feels good. Sure. I don't think you ever get to the point, uh, you know, we were talking about how we're uh, getting older, we're getting wiser. Um, <laughs> I like the way you put it. <laughs> yes. yes. Definitely wisdom. Getting wiser. Um, it doesn't mean you look forward to the cross every day, but you look forward to the cross every day. Right. You know, because as as Joyce was speaking earlier, the, the you mature. Yeah. And when you mature, you realize, you know what, this is the way I, I become more like him. Mm-hmm. It's interesting, too, how it, it works the opposite of the way that you think it will. Yeah. Because it is very hard. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of hard choices along the way. Mm-hmm. But the more of those choices that you make, the happier you get. Right. Mm-hmm. Where you think, if mm-hmm. I get more of these things for me, I'll be happier. It really works just the opposite. Opposite. It's, so it's opposite. the way God's kingdom is, that, yeah. that upside down love. The more we love others, the more love Comes we have in our life. Spirit. And mm-hmm. yeah, it, it, it really is surprising. It's kind of shocking. Well, when we do things the way God wants them done, mm-hmm. then he always takes care of us. But when we try to take care of us, it just doesn't work. No, it doesn't. I, I have know. so many stories of how that's true. <laughs> yeah. I, I realized so one time that I can have a problem, mm-hmm. and for some unknown reason, I can't seem to help myself. But at the same time, I have a problem, God will anoint me to help you. Mm. Wow. And might anoint me to help you with the same problem I've got. So what's that all about? Well, it's very simple. God called us to reach out to others. That's we're sowing our seed. Mm -hmm. And then he brings the harvest of what we need in our life. But we can't, we just simply cannot take care of ourselves. We can't make ourselves happy. We can't, Mm -hmm. you know, the only way is you give away, you sow, and then God causes you to reap. And I think people have a lot of personal problems. And we, we have this silly idea that when we're hurting, we've got to isolate ourselves and shrink back and nurse our wounds. And, you know, well, I can't be doing anything for anybody else because I'm hurting. I've got this problem. Mm-hmm. And that's the best time hmm. to, reach out. to reach out to other people mm. and sow good seed into their life is when you are hurting because that's when you really need God. So true. To bring a breakthrough in your life. And to me, when you want to talk about spiritual warfare, that loving other people, and you know, that's a lot of things. It's praying for people. It's forgiving people. It's being merciful to people. It's helping people in need. It's giving beyond what's comfortable for you. It's, you know, I've, if we just listen to people, they tell us what they need and what they want. And we, we need to be listening and ready to meet those mm-hmm. needs. Which goes against yeah. everything in culture. Right. That's right. just the opposite of what the world tells us we should be doing. Yeah. Because exactly. I should look out for me right. and how can I get ahead? Right. And mm-hmm. you just take care of you and how can I 
succeed. Well, and the world feeds that into you. You deserve Definitely. it. Do this you for yourself. It. Yeah. You know, yeah. You, yeah. And I just remember when God spoke to my heart, I was praying one day, asking him to help somebody. He said, will you stop asking me do. to do things <laughs> that you could easily do and just don't want to? Yeah. Ah, no, I, love it. I love it. I love it because he speaks that clear, right? You know, yeah. and like you said, the the scripture that says his ways are not like our ways, Mm-mm. right? No, they're not. Totally different, and that's why it's so important to feed yourself the Word of God, right? Mm-hmm. To hear, to embrace the teachings of Joyce and so many <laughs> other anointed people, because really, people don't people really don't do that. It's like they spend a few minutes in the word and they right. think they're going to actually walk in victory mm-hmm. the rest of the week. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't happen like that because yeah. we're so totally opposite of what God requires. Yeah. Right. You have to continue to feed yourself the word of mm-hmm. God, right. meditate on it, hang out people who are going in the same direction. Mm-hmm. All of that helps and you. And do it. And do it. Do right. it. Right. You have that's, to do it. That's you have to the walk key. In we have to do it, not just hear it. Hear it. Mm-hmm. You got to do, do it. it. That's right. I think that's another great keystone is noticing who you're hanging out with. Yeah. Right. Noticing who you're learning from, mm-hmm. how you're growing. Are you growing? Are you growing? Yeah. Right. That That's a, a great example of something else for us to continue all our life is right. that walk closer to Jesus, which sounds super spiritual, but... But it really is, am I doing anything to get to know him better? Am I sharing myself with him? Mm-hmm. And am I learning more about who he is? But, you know, it's like you, you just said super spiritual. We need to be super spiritual. We do. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely true. But sometimes people feel like that's over my head somehow. No, it's not. It's, it's, it's not over your head when the Holy Spirit comes in. Hmm. We can't do anything on our own. What we do is is filthy rags. You know what I'm saying? But with the Holy Spirit, and and I say that because I hear that a lot over the years where they will categorize something as super spiritual when it's really what the Word tells us to do. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And and Mm -hmm. that's the way we walk in a super spiritual life. It's like if you follow the Spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you live in the Spirit, you won't. But if you don't live in the Spirit then you're going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Right. You know we make it saying? more complicated. We make it more complicated. Than what the scripture actually says. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. And I don't know about you, Cece, but I feel a greater responsibility because I'm in ministry. Mm-hmm. Because to me, there is nothing more, I'll just use the word disgusting because that's what it is to me, mm-hmm. than to see somebody in full-time ministry behind the scenes mistreating mm-hmm. other people because they think they're a big shot. Oh, my goodness. I mean, that, that just aggravates me worse than anything. And God let me know a long time ago, you know, you're, what you're doing, that, that's your job, just like that's somebody right. else is going to a job. I expect you behind the scenes to live mm. the life Amen. that you're telling everybody yeah. else to live. Amen. And so we were talking or I was talking when we started with me teaching about how important it is that we do what's right when nobody's looking. So let's talk about that for a minute. Love that. How important is that? Love that. I mean, (laughs) when she said Keystone, I was going to go there because when you started out with that, I think that's everything because you're not living for people, you're living for God. I have learned that when you fear God, you live for him when nobody else is watching right. because he's watching. And so when you live for him, you're going to automatically be a blessing to people. Right. Hmm. And you're going to do what's right. I, you got to do what's right. If I go all the way back, you know, I couldn't go to Bible college. When God called me to teach, I had three teenagers and a baby. Mm-hmm. So, you know, no, no, I had my hands college, full. Right. And I couldn't just take off and go to Bible college somewhere. But I always say I went to the school of the Holy Spirit. And he literally taught me in my daily life the principles that I teach now. Mm -hmm. And I clearly remember, I've got all my silly little grocery store Mm -hmm. stories, you know, about getting things in my cart early on in the shopping. And then by the time I got to the last aisle, realizing I didn't have enough money to pay for all of it. Mm -hmm. And I remember starting to take stuff out and just put it where I was at. And he'd say, go put it back where you got it. Mm -hmm. Well... Nobody but him would know if I did or I didn't, mm-hmm. but 
he was trying to teach me to be excellent, yeah. mm -hmm. not just to be mediocre or sloppy, but he would put things in my heart like, if you owned this store, what would you want somebody to do? Same thing. And so we're back to that golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Yeah. And it is so important what we do before God, because if we're living for him mm -hmm. and before him, and like he sees everything. Sees yeah. everything. There's nothing he doesn't see. Yeah. And the Bible says someday it's all going to come out in the open. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's why that excellence <laughs> and the integrity go so hand in hand. Right. Yeah. You can't have one without the other. And there are so many things that we could get away with. Right. On, but we really on don't. An earthly, yeah, yeah, on an earthly plane, but you don't get away with it because it it changes your your life it yeah. it changes who you are in God's eyes right and it changes eventually how we interact with others mm -hmm. definitely. right definitely. definitely I tell people a lot of times uh, with my husband and we know as women we can do things and they don't even get it sometimes <laughs> so <Yeah>. often <laughs> yeah let's let's go there yeah. Yeah. I got a bad attitude and or I said something wrong and he's you know didn't even notice it the holy spirit is like okay you need to say you're sorry and I'm like what are you talking about he doesn't he didn't even know <laughs> Yeah. So why do I have to why apologize? apologize? And he, he never says he's sorry, so uh, <laughs> why should I be sorry? Right. But, you know, when you God is working things out, He's putting things in. We, when I submit yeah. to the Holy Spirit right. and say, hey, bae, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. I said this wrong. I said that wrong. And I shouldn't have done that. It's It, it allows the Holy Spirit to do so much with that just that one act. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's huge. You're walking in humility. You're honoring your husband. You're honoring God. He blesses you. You grow up. You know, the enemy told, he's the only one who loses when we submit. Yeah. And you know what? We, we, we're not going to be humble before God if we won't humble ourselves before man. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's true. That's so good. And a lot of people think, you know, well, I'll humble myself under the mighty hand of God. But you, if you won't humble yourself to people... Hmm then you're not going to humble yourself before God. Have you seen that as maybe a, a major reason why some people in ministry make it and some don't? And I say make it, I mean, they've been faithful and they have lived lives of integrity and you see others who just don't and it's, they fizzle out. Is it that point? That well, I think the things that we're talking about, you know, we don't talk a lot today about the anointing, but mm -hmm. we need that more than we need anything yes, else. Absolutely. I mean, yes, I don't care how Lord. good Cece's voice yes, is. Yes, Lord. If she's not carrying God's anointing, yeah. which is his presence That's and right. his power mm -hmm. on her life, then she can sing till she doesn't have a voice left and it's That's not right. really going to do anything. Yeah. You know, bless anybody. I mean, I, I'm just blunt when I teach and I, you know, if people wanted to, they could get pretty mad at some of the stuff I say. And yet, you know, I remember one woman saying, you're the only person I know that can kill me and make me laugh about it while I'm dying. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> and we enjoy and, it. But I, I you know, Two people can preach the exact same thing, and if one's anointed, people will get it, and if the other one's not, they won't. And the you're not going to carry it. God won't anoint the flesh. Mm -hmm. Back in the Old Testament, the anointing oil could not be put on the flesh. Yeah. And so we uh, these things we're talking about, to me, this is the meat of life. Yeah, absolutely. Keeping your word, mm -hmm. doing what you say you're going to do. Mm -hmm. And is there a problem with that today or not? Oh, my. my gosh. Everywhere. Yep. I'll, I'll call you next week. No, you won't. You don't even intend to call me next week. Mm -mm. I'll call you and we'll go to lunch. You, you know more want to go to lunch with me than a man in the moon. You're just trying to get rid of me. Mm. And so, we, <laughs> oh, you know, Lord, we, <laughs> 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 so right. we, we need to do what we say that we're going to do. Mm -hmm. And we need to do what's right when nobody's looking. Yep. And we need to be very concerned about the people that usually get ignored in life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know you're in a lot of arenas mm -hmm. like I am, and mm -hmm. there's always people That's behind right. the big Same. stage mm -hmm. that are being paid to do little right. odd jobs. And those are the people we need to seek out and be kind to. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. I agree. I agree. Um, when you think about the Good Samaritan, it's like he was able to see. Mm -hmm. Then he was able to have compassion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, then he, he actually went and did something. And, and he there. stopped. He stopped, right? He was busy. He was going he somewhere. He was going somewhere. That's right. He obviously was going somewhere because he left mm -hmm. the guy at the inn. Mm -hmm. right? And the thing I love about that story is he said, 
what whatever it costs, whatever it costs, I'll, I'll pay you back when I come back. Mm-hmm. He yeah. did not put a limit on what he would do. He said, oh, whatever God. it costs, I'll pay you when I come back. So he obviously had to go somewhere. Yeah. But he cared enough about this guy. He stopped. He took care of him. He went and did his business. Then he came hey, back, back. That's right. and finished Take the job that God gave him to do. Now, see, I've read that story so many times, but I never got that. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't put a limit on what he would no do limit. for somebody Whatever else. Whatever it cost you. Yeah. And there are so many ways that, that are very practical ways that we can do that in our lives. I, I think about things as simple as you walk by someone and you say, hi, how are you? And you you just keep walking. You don't look for an answer. Mm, yes. Like showing sincere interest right. in a person That's yeah. good. is a huge way to show the love of God. Mm-hmm. So when you say, how are you? You know, stop and look them in the eye and see what their answer and is. And do you really care how exactly, they are? Exactly right. Or is it just something that we that we get in the habit of saying? To say. ben, it makes a big that. difference. Yeah. You want to know something ben, practical Joyce taught me? You'll appreciate, Joyce, you taught this to us years ago in chapel. You said, when you go to the bathroom, always wipe the counter off when you get water on there. (laughs) And every time I go to the bathroom, I think Joyce told me I need to wipe off this counter. So I do it. And I leave that bathroom feeling like I... The whole staff does it. Those bathrooms are... (laughs) Those counters are clean. And replace the toilet paper if you use the last of it. (laughs) I think he told us to clean the the piddle off the seat if you get any on there as well. (laughs) So we do that. But I just... Those little things get past us. Yeah. And we... We don't, we don't account for the importance of them. If right. you're sloppy in your natural habits, you're going to be sloppy spiritually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. This is so it's powerful. really true. I, can't take it. I find that with discipline, too. I can't too. take it. I Just give her a second. It. Y'all I know. I can't take it. <laughs> <this. laughs> Just okay. take a minute. It's, okay. it's good. Mm. No, okay. it's the same with, with when I'm more disciplined in my time with God, it spills oh, yeah. over into the rest of my life too. Absolutely. Then I'm more disciplined in all the other areas, whether it's you know health or integrity, right. all those other things are on that foundation mm-hmm. of the time that I spend mm-hmm. with the Lord. Right. So it really makes a difference. And you're talking about the anointing being right. so important. It seems like these things that we're talking about are, are kind of... T- Telling the soil for the anointing right. to mm-hmm. find a place Amen. to yeah. take root. See, I have to have God's anointing. I don't. I don't sing like Cece. <laughs> I can't impress a crowd with my vocal ability. They turn my microphone off <laughs> when I sing because nobody knows what key I sing in. They have a, it's one that doesn't exist. I love and uh, I don't do anything fancy. Mm. I mean, I'm just. I don't play a musical instrument. I'm. I'm just me. Yeah. You know. I'm. I mean, I guess I'm okay smart, but I'm not brilliant, you know. I I read, but I don't read real <laughs> fast. I mean, I'm just a very ordinary mm. person that God called, but I know that I have to have God's anointing. Yeah, you that's go. huge. I have to have that. Yeah. I can't. That's what I have. And that and that's <laughs> wisdom. Yeah. That's the wisdom. That's the brilliant part. What, what do we have without that? We have that? nothing we have without nothing. him. Without that, and remember again, the anointing, if you're not familiar with what that is to our viewers, it's the power and the presence of God on your life. Mm -hmm. And when you have that doors open that wouldn't open ordinarily, you get favor in places where you wouldn't ordinarily get favor. Mm -hmm. I think when you're anointed, people like you whether they want to or not. Oh, I like that. Right. That's, yeah. They're just, yeah. that's right. That's, fun. that's right. That's fun. fun. I like that's it. That's right. God will put you on somebody's heart, and they don't know you from Adam, or you like you right. said, they don't even like you, but but it's the Spirit of God. That is right. so great. But when you were talking about um, getting the soil ready, these things, I just think it's so awesome what we're discussing because a lot of times we dismiss the small things. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. But that's where it all begins. You got it. Mm-hmm. It's the small things mm-hmm. when we realize that we can't ignore those things because yeah. that's the thing that builds character. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. It's those small things, loving people, yeah. doing things, like you said, clean up the bathroom. Mm-hmm. It's little right. things. And the Holy Spirit speaks to all of us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even when we don't want to hear them. Right. Right? <laughs> it's like, I don't want to hear this right now. Yeah. <laughs> but he speaks to you. And, and I just want to encourage people to listen. Mm-hmm. And like Joy said, do it. Just do the small things. Yeah. Yeah, because then he can trust you with the bigger things. Mm-hmm. In, yeah. your pri- in your private life. In your private life. You know, it's not, being a Christian is really not about how you act in church on Sunday morning. So 
I remember one minister saying, if I was looking for somebody spiritual, I wouldn't go to the church and look. I'd go, I'd go to their home oh, yeah. and mm-hmm. see what's going on there. Yeah. And it really is wow. what's going on behind closed doors. Yep. It's really the most important. And uh, you can't be mad and be a Christian. There's so many people today that are angry at somebody. I mean, I've never had less than 80% of the crowd lift their hand and say there's somebody they need to forgive. Well, then do it. Mm-hmm. You know, we know we should do it. Right. So do it. And... Uh, it's, I mean, I got mad about something recently, and I was mad for about three days, and that is a long time for me. Mad. And I finally thought, you know what? I can't do this. Yeah. I, I can't. I'm not responsible for what you did. Mm-hmm. I'm only responsible for what I do. Yeah. And whether you change or not, mm-hmm. I'm only going to answer for myself. And I decided I'm not, I'm not being mad anymore. Yeah, you, you, I, you can't do it. Yeah. No. Yeah. You you can't be happy mm-hmm. and be mad. You can't be happy and be selfish. Mm-hmm. And when you really get right down to it, isn't isn't the bottom line of what everybody wants is they just want to be happy? Yes. Absolutely. Yep. They think they want money because they, they think, think that'll make no, them happy. That's they right. They think they want power and position because they think that'll make them happy. But what we really want is we just we just want to be happy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. So I was reading a leadership book yesterday. Please don't ask the title. I won't remember it, (laughs) but it's a great book. Good. (laughs) But in this book, they were talking about the difference between motivation and inspiration. And when you're motivated, it's usually by the consequences of what will happen if you do or don't do what you're asked to do. Mm -hmm. And inspiration makes you want, it makes you want to do it because there's freedom in that and there's fulfillment in that. And Mm -hmm. so what you're saying reminds me of that because I can be motivated to put the card away because Joyce told me to, or I know it's the right thing to do. And if I don't, my kids will see that I've disobeyed the rules. Mm -hmm. If I'm inspired to do it because that's how God has taught me and there's excellence in that, to me, there's freedom in that because Mm -hmm. that's where you find that happiness. It's it's a fulfilled life because there's freedom in living under those principles God has given you. And it's not, I'm not doing it because there's consequences to my actions. It's because I want that full life that he has for me. And that's how you find it. Yeah, and and I think you mature into that. At least for good me. to know. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I'm because just reading the book. So. <laughs> no, when, when I when I was growing up, they taught on hell a lot. Oh sure, <laughs> that yeah. Now they don't teach. Now right. they don't teach on it enough. <laughs> they don't teach on it enough now. And it was you know so starting. I was like, oh, I don't want to do. That. Okay, okay. I, I, I'm a kid, but I know I don't want to go to hell. Yep. Right, yeah, right. <laughs> you kind of know that. Um, but then you you get to know who he is, and you yeah. fall in love with him, and yeah. it becomes more. But I think you. I think both of them motivate you to kind of stay in the right sure right exactly (laughs) different times right god is good and he is love but there's a mistaken thought today Mm -hmm. that because he's love you can do almost anything and get by with it sure and that is just not true i mean there is a point at which god just won't put up with it anymore Mm mm-hmm and so, yeah. any parent can tell you that. Yeah, any right. Yeah. yeah, you, know, you it's love like I, your kids. I used but to there tell comes my kids, point. "I hope you listen to what I tell you, but if you don't, I will touch your circumstances." Exactly. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> and that's uh, and that's what we do as parents. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It's like that's right. And, and and going to the freedom. I mean, we do it as parents because boundaries yep. create freedom. Right. Mm-hmm. You you don't want to mm-hmm. punish your child. Mm-hmm. You don't want to do that. I mean, you you hate to do that, but. If you have to, if you really love them, yeah. you know, I heard one time that a large majority of people in prison are there because their parents never disciplined them. Mm. Wow. I believe that. Is that not amazing? Mm. Yeah. They, see, really, I believe that. when you discipline your children, even though they don't like it, they know deep down it's because you love them. Yeah. Right. Do they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, is it because it makes them feel safe? Or like you, like why is that? Because I, we're working through that now as I discipline my children. Do you have to go so deep every yeah, time? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I like to stump you a little bit. I just, I wonder, I think knowing that kind of helps me in my vo- motivation as my husband and I parent our kids is how, how do I teach them when you put the chip bag back into the pantry, don't just shove it in there and shut the door so things fall out. Like take, take the time to do it the right way. So. Okay, well, let's put it like this. If you... Have you ever had anybody in your life that um, tried to control you? Yeah. Okay. 
Do you know that if you let them do it, mm -hmm. they won't respect you? Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. hmm. That's very true. Mm -hmm. And I think your children are the same way. If yeah. you let them get by with stuff that they know is wrong, yeah. they won't respect you. That's right. They, huh. they only respect you if you... I mean, and I can go back to when our kids were little. I mean, if Dave told them, mm -hmm. if you keep doing this, this is what's going to happen, mm -hmm. they knew... Right. Yeah. That was what was going to happen. He was going to keep his word. Absolutely. But with me, I was a little more emotional. It's like, yep. you're not going to go out of this house for six months. And then, you know, I would, uh, I'd realize the next day, what have I done to myself? I don't want to go in you the house in there for six too. months. Just stop trying to get and them out now. So then I'd back Who off of what punishing? I said. Mm -hmm. So they didn't, huh. they didn't have the reverential fear of me right. that they did of Dave sure. because he didn't threaten. Mm, he meant what he, he said. He just, if you do what's right, this. This is what's That's happened. Good. And if you keep doing what's wrong, this is what's going to mm -hmm. happen. And our children, they, they want, yes, it does make them feel safe. Mm -hmm. It makes them feel that you love them. Right. That's really good. We were with our grandson, who's, who's three, um, last weekend, and he got very upset with his father, <laughs> who told him that he couldn't do something he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Very upset. And... Big tears, oh. and his life was ruined for that right, moment. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, Forever. But I thought it was really wonderful that our son-in-law just just said to him, I know you don't like this, but even when I don't like what you're doing, I love you. Right. Mm -hmm. And this this is why we have to do it this way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it's, it's the way that we all need to understand. It's not about where the love ends. Mm -hmm. It's about where the love begins right. and how it helps us to be so much better down the road, yeah. which is right. not easy in that moment when right. you you can't have, like, I had I had to tell our grandson uh, to take his shoe out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but why? And but, he did not why? like that. Right. Why right. can't I chew on my shoe? <laughs> <laughs> That's so gross. <laughs> And oh, I God. said, you know, one day you'll thank me for this. <laughs> <laughs> right. They don't understand no. at that age, you know. Yeah. It's so funny you said it because I have a grandson who's three. <laughs> and it is hilarious because he comes out of the room, he's mad. And you'll say, what's wrong, Wyatt? Papa told me what to do. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's his thing now. Gaga told me what to do. We're like, do you realize we, we're going to be telling you what to do for a while? Yeah. <laughs> so many years. <laughs> Oh, my but my four-year-old grandson, his mother told him one day, she said, you you act like you think that you're the boss around here. And he said, I don't think I am. I know I am. <laughs> Four years old. Four years. <laughs> <laughs> but they do know. They know. So that's why, like she said, you have to mm -hmm. say what you mean, mean what you say, yeah. and know that you're training them up, training them up in a way that they're going to reverence you, but mm -hmm. reverence God. Yeah, yeah, that's good. You know? Well, the Lord says, those whom I love, I chasten. Yeah. I chastise. Yeah. And in the Amplified Bible in Revelation, it says, those whom I love, I tell them their faults. Hmm. And I thought one time, maybe you could love me a little less. Because <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 I felt like all I had was faults, you know? And uh, uh, God has just, it. he's changed me so much, and <laughs> mm. I hope and pray that he continues to do so. I don't, you know, I never get upset when God corrects me, because I see it as a sign of his love. Yeah. Just, and I, I'm actually going to teach on this when I go to Nashville here oh, soon. And uh, he told me, showed me that in a couple of areas I was self-righteous. Well, I didn't know that. Hmm. I, I didn't really know that. But I was so glad. I never got upset that he told me. I didn't even get upset. I wish I wasn't that way, but I can't correct something if I don't know anything about it. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. And so we should never get upset when God shows us a fault we have. We should be glad that he loves us enough not to leave us the way we are. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. And so. Amen. So some of these keystones, let's go back over some of them because there's so many great ones. Living in excellence and integrity. Right. Walking in love right. mm -hmm. as much as we can, paying attention to people and, and um, being less selfish in our lives. Mm -hmm. And you talked about being um, ready to forgive. Forgiving. When we need to. And, and I, I would throw in with that, 
working on being as unoffendable as possible. Right. Oh, yeah, because if, if we have less to forgive, it's just all easier in the long run. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we don't have as much so work true. to do. <laughs> not being That's self-righteous. True. Not being self-righteous. <laughs> yes, I'm not being still working. Now i got to really work on that for a year. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be your next book. Because it doesn't just happen But But I overnight. love that. I, I think that's so important that it, it doesn't just happen. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I think sometimes you can be so hard on yourself or feel like it's supposed to yeah. happen. It's a process. Mm-hmm. We all have problems. That's We've all right. got yeah. things Everybody. wrong with us. We've all got weaknesses. If we didn't, we wouldn't need Jesus. Right. right. There you go. He, he came because we cannot be perfect. Mm-hmm. But we can have a perfect heart toward God. And that, that perfect heart is I want to do it all right. Mm-hmm. 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 And I'm so glad you're here to cover for me when I don't. Mm-hmm. When I don't. So part of that loving well is is loving yourself in a healthy way too, the way that right. God for sure. gives us his love. Cece, I know this is something that's been important to you, it is just looking at loving people in a way that makes a difference in the church. You and your husband have yeah. a church yeah. and and um, with everything that you do, all your connections with people, right. how have you found that to be something that's made a difference in your life and others? Oh, loving people? Yeah. It's so, it's so rewarding to love people. Mm-hmm. And, but yet it, it changes you. It has changed me to love people well. Mm-hmm. When you love, it's, it's one thing to say you love people. It's another thing to love people well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you were saying, stop, pay attention, change your schedule, be willing to, no limits to what you will do. And pastoring has taught us that, you know, disciples, making disciples. You're right. walking through life with people. You know, when I'm on the stage, it's like, God bless you guys. Love you. Bye. You know, I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> and you go home. But but to get a chance to, and, and and we're all called to this, not just pastors, but actually to be the good neighbor. Yeah. Right. You know, and to be there when people are hurting mm-hmm. and, and, and lending your life and laying down your life. Mm-hmm. And and it changed. You just, bec- that's, I think that's the only way you really become like Jesus mm-hmm. is when you learn to love. Sure. People will. Mm-hmm. He was all about people. All about people. Always, you know, we, uh, there's a book out about following the steps of Jesus, mm-hmm. which has been very popular. But it would be interesting to write a book called Following the Stops of Jesus mm-hmm. because he always stopped mm-hmm. no matter where he was going. And I mean, that guy was busy. Yeah. We think we're busy. Very busy. Listen, he, a lot. Crowds everywhere. Yeah. A lot of people Crowds everywhere. Him, right? Everybody wanted him. Everybody needed him. And yet, he all, you cannot find a place where he didn't stop mm-hmm. for a hurting person yeah. right. that asked him right. to listen or to right. touch them or to help them. Or he go didn't find make them feel them. bad. Oh, go I'm ahead. sorry. No. I, he didn't make them feel guilty for having no. to stop. He, was, no. he had such mercy and grace with them. He stopped for children. Yeah. Right. You know, he stopped. And we just, today people are so busy that we can have needs right in front of us. Mm-hmm. And we're just too busy right. to even see them, let alone take time to do anything and about and it. And I've been extremely guilty of that in the yeah. past. I've been extremely guilty of that. I think we all that. are. Haven't we all, yeah. Of just being so busy. And it's like, then you realize the Holy Spirit is like, well, what do you think you're here for? <laughs> well, this is why you're here. You're here to represent me. You're actually my hands and feet. Mm-hmm. If you don't stop, who's going to stop? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's good. And I think we all have to take that call personally because that's the church moving. That's the church going forth. And that that's when we're going to see our cities change and our nations change yeah. when we realize that we have to stop. Right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Any other keystones? Any? I don't want to miss anything. Anything else that you guys... She has said so much. I... <laughs> <laughs> Just rewind this over and over. Well, one, one other thing that you had mentioned briefly was that it's important to wear two false eyelashes <laughs> and not just one. For sure. For sure. Now, that's wait the, a minute. That's somebody, the grace we need. Somebody right now is sitting home being self-righteous <laughs> because they're thinking false eyelashes. You shouldn't wear false eyelashes. <laughs> well, Cece, was just telling a funny story about uh, yes, a moment. Yes, I went out on stage with one lash. <laughs> the Lord well, knows right. how to humble me. He keeps me humble. I took a shower the other day, and when I got out, started drying myself, I, the lower part of my body felt kind of funny, and I, and I realized... I'd rinsed off the top half and not the bottom. I'd get back in the shower. 
<laughs> it was still soapy down there. I, I, you know, I don't remember quite as well as I used to. <laughs> I'm telling you. But, but going back to, I think this is a great keystone. Joyce mentioned it earlier. And that is she understands that she needs him. Right. Mm. You need the anointing. You need the Spirit of God. Yeah. I know that if I don't have it, it's like I'm done. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. right. Mm-hmm. And I think that desperation, when you understand that you need Him, yeah. not just in the big things, but the small mm-hmm. things every day, like she said, raising your children, and you just need Him there. Yeah. And and I think when you understand that, then you you're cautiously going forward, not in a fearful way, but being cautious and, and really inviting him in every moment of your life. With Apart from me, you can do, do nothing. nothing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Love and respect for him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. There are so many great verses too. A Hebrews thirteen eighteen says, pray for us. We are sure that we, um, to for us to be sure that we have a clear conscience and desire to live honorably in every way. That's we good. need help in this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's why I think these scriptures <laughs> no, yeah. are really important. It's like, what can I stand on? These these are God's promises right. that He will help us in this, and His Spirit is here so that we're not trying to do it all on our own, trying to do it in the mm-hmm. flesh, trying to be perfect because it is not going to work. Right. Mm-hmm. So a, a, just a, a lot of wonderful things about what wisdom is in our life. Um, James 3.17, but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure. Mm -hmm. Our hearts need to be pure. Mm -hmm. Then peace loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. It's a lot right there. Yeah, it is. It's like we started with Joyce. We're back to, oh. (laughs) (laughs) Ouch again. (laughs) Exactly, back to the ouch. But thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit Mm -hmm. to help us. Amen. Yeah. Great helper. Well, thank you all. All so much. Great conversation. Awesome. Thank it's been really very um, practical, very helpful. And uh, also, it's great just to have women who can share these thoughts mm-hmm. together. And for all of you, too, we, we pray that you have what you need in your life, that you can walk in the Spirit of God, that you can have such a love for Him, that you are just looking for Him in everything, and that that love that you have for Him will pour out into other people's lives everywhere you go. Those are the things that will change your life and change the world around you. So thanks for talking it out with us. Go to joycemeyer.org slash talk it out. You can get all of our episodes. Don't forget to subscribe. And we will see you back here when we talk about some more wonderful things like wearing one eyelash (laughs) next time. (laughs) Bye-bye, everyone.